Hey folks, welcome to the ACE orientation. We're glad that you're here. Um, we are recording this meeting so that folks who are not joining us can watch this later. Um, and this session, just like every Monday's session, um, 8.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. on Mondays, will be an orientation to the week. So you are always welcome to come to this session Mondays at 8.30 uh, just to get a lay of the land, get some information, get your questions answered about, about the week. Um, so today we're kind of doing two orientations at once because it's the orientation to the whole workshop. And then we'll also do the week one orientation at the tail end so that you're clear on what's going on this particular week. Um, so before we get started, I just want to introduce our team here because actually there's lots of folks participating in the ACE workshop um, who I don't know, which are, is really wonderful. Um, it, it's a little unclear exactly how many participants we'll have, but I think it's gonna be in the range of uh, about um, 60 maybe. So there's lots of us and we're really excited um, about the response. So I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Robin DeRosa. Um, I've been at Plymouth State for uh, just about 20 years and I've been a professor in the English department and then in the interdisciplinary studies program. And now I run the Open Learning and Teaching Collaborative, which is pretty much your uh, teaching and learning center. So we do all sorts of professional development, particularly focused on um, faculty right now. So that's what we're looking at here. We'll talk more about this course, but I wanna introduce the other uh, collab staff members and I will ask them to introduce themselves, starting with Martha. Hi everybody, my name is Martha Burtis and I am the learning and teaching developer in the Open Collab. I've been at Plymouth State for about 13 months, <laughs> um, but my background um, prior to coming here was both in instructional de design and faculty development as well as digital pedagogy. So I have a, a background in those areas and I'm really looking forward to working with lots of you as we go through this program together. And Hannah. Hi everyone, my name is Hannah Hounsel. I'm um, the learning advisor for the Open Collab. Um, and I've been at PSU for seven years. Some of that was as a student um, in the English department, but now I'm here as a professional person. So I'm really excited to work with everybody. And Matthew. Hello, I'm Matt Cheney. I'm Director of Interdisciplinary Studies. Um, just going into my third year in that position, other than that, I've been at Plymouth State since birth uh, because my mother worked here for uh, most of her career. Um, that's great. And Matt is uh, serving as a mentor in this course. And we actually have a nice, robust group of mentors who I am not going to introduce right now. But you will be meeting because um, most folks will um, have a mentor group. But we'll talk more about that as we go along. But I especially want to thank our course mentors because uh, given the small staff, as you can see, of the collab, um, without these mentors, it would be really hard to accommodate this number of people. I also want to give a shout out to course mentor um, Kathy LeBlanc because it is her work in um, partnering with Academic Affairs to get the Davis Foundation grant that is stipending a good chunk of you folks um, for participating. So thank you, Kathy, because it's always nice to actually be paid for your labor. Um, and apologies to those of you who are not. Um, okay, so welcome. Um, I'm gonna start with a quick uh, talk about what this is because I think some of you are, have sort of been uh, joining us for various ACE programs along the way and some of you are like, I don't know, I just somehow got into this room and I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, so the ACE framework is a framework that is designed um, basically to help faculty and institutions deal with uh, COVID and how it affects teaching and learning. Um, so in particular, what we're thinking about doing here um, in this course is not so much talking just about course design, but about course design that specifically looks at uh, the issues that we're going to be facing this fall and possibly probably this spring as well 
um, because of the COVID pandemic. Um, so ACE was developed because when COVID hit and everybody had to quickly pivot, surely you've heard that word now, people say we had to pivot online. It didn't feel like a pivot, I think, which is a very pretty kind of dance term. It felt more like a um, head, head first fall into a quarry or something. Um, but when we had to pivot to online, pretty much what was provided to faculty um, were technology tools, right? The idea was, here's the technology, here's what you need to use, get online. Um, and the, most faculty did it, uh, often within three or four days. Um, but the problem was a lot of us, I think, became a little bit disconnected from the ways that we are committed to teaching um, because we were so consumed with the technology and how we were going to pull this off, which is totally understandable. Um, but ACE was developed to put teaching and pedagogy, right, how we teach back in the center of this transition to COVID-oriented teaching. So we are gonna be talking a lot about online modalities and um, remote learning in this workshop, but primarily we are putting um, a conversation about teaching at the heart of, of this. Um, so that's the framework that we deal with, is really a framework about pedagogy, the how of how we teach. Um, and basically what we did in the collab is we developed a framework uh, related to pedagogy that focuses on the kinds of issues that our particular students at Plymouth State are dealing with and the particular pedagogies that we are known for at Plymouth State. Um, I think most of us who've taught at Plymouth for any amount of time would say there's certain ways to characterize a Plymouth education and, and we hope that those things focus around sort of personalized learning, um, collaboration, a sense of experiential and active learning. And the question is when we go online because of an emergency, what happens to all of those investments? So we developed the, the ACE framework um, to keep us focused on what matters so that at the end of the semester, we don't just say, hey, we got online. Um, and perhaps you've heard some of our students talking about that and um, not being particularly excited about how that worked out for them. Uh, what we want after is to say we went online and we still offered the kinds of learning experiences that we feel proud to offer. So that's what ACE is about. It, um, ACE stands for Adaptability, Connection, and Equity. And I'm going to talk briefly about each of those things, starting interestingly with the last one, with equity. Um, because many of us who are teaching in the spring, I think, when the COVID, COVID hit really quickly, right, in some ways, because even though, you know, there might have been months of the lead up, when things shut down, um, they shut down fast. And what that meant for a lot of our students is that not only were they thrust online without very much preparation, but they also sort of immediately got displaced from campus. They immediately perhaps lost a job, either a work study job or a job at Biedermann's, right? Um, so they were sort of immediately uh, concerned about paying rents or buying groceries. So what, it, what happened to me, I thought really interestingly, some of the students that I was connected with, they were not freaking out as much about their online curriculum, which is what faculty were freaking out about. They were freaking out about how am I gonna pay my bill? Like I have a bill, it's due literally tomorrow. And I counted on each paycheck and now I can't pay it. Um, that was augmented when you added in the connectivity issue, the fact that now they were responsible perhaps for their own broadband bill where they may have been using the internet on campus before. They may not have a reliable computer and they're trying to do everything on a phone because um, they can't easily get to campus um, to, to use the equipment. So all of those equity pieces, uh, turned out to be what I spent almost the first three weeks of COVID on, even though I'm a teaching and learning designer, you know, so I was supposed to be helping you guys um, design your courses and, and we were, but the real emergency seemed very tied to a lot of these basic needs issues. So when we built ACE, we decided it's not really going to be useful to do all sorts of cool online learning stuff if we don't 
deal with the equity issues that are going to really challenge our students if COVID keeps enduring. So a lot of what we'll talk about in this workshop has to do with how to build um, flexible remote learning experiences that put equity right at the heart. Uh, the second one there I want to talk about is connection. And I think this is really where I feel my connection to Plymouth um, come alive. So if you do online trainings in other places, or if you take an online course yourself, um, or for example, like my daughter is in high school, she's been doing uh, VLAX, which is a virtual learning academy in New Hampshire, um, to try to deal with some of the gaps left by COVID. If you look at any of those online classes that you may um, find from other institutions, there's a pretty good chance that those classes look a lot like each other, one to the other. Um, they tend to be set up in what we call the LMS or the learning management system. So for us at Plymouth, that's Moodle, um, but you may take one at some other institution that's in Canvas or Blackboard or whatever. And they tend to um, organize the class in just the same way with modules. And each module has a topic and you watch a video and you take online quizzes and you do discussion postings. And, um, and we know that there's lots of problems with synchronous or live learning because students can't always get connected. So as a result, these classes um, sometimes really are independent where you're working on your own completely. Some of that, though, that kind of learning environment, which is focused primarily on content, you know, do, did you learn this content? Go on to the next thing. Did you learn that content? Go on to the next thing. Um, that can be really effective, but it's also not exactly how lots of us teach our regular classes. We've got group work and activities and we're going out in the field and we're doing project-based learning and we just have all sorts of things that we talk about in our tours with families um, that make us really sort of uh, connected to each other. Faculty and students are having um, serious connections. We're doing research together. We're developing relationships. So what the ACE um, framework is designed to do is to help you figure out how to bring more of that into COVID ready courses. So that if you have to pivot online, you don't lose all those connective tissues um, that make our courses feel really different than a um, kind of a standardized online course. So that's the connection piece. We're gonna talk about connecting our students to each other, connecting them to you as a faculty member and connecting them out to the world through projects and through engaged um, and experiential learning opportunities. And then finally, the last one should surprise nobody because you may have realized that we have to be pretty adaptable. Um, it, you may have realized this, first of all, because even though you're getting all sorts of messaging from the college, if I unmuted any of you and I said, what's this fall going to look like? You'd probably be like, dude, I don't know, right? We, we, we have a sense that we're going back face to face. Um, but we do have the feeling that that could change at any second. And also, um, for those of you who aren't as involved as some of us in the reopening task forces and all the work that's going on behind the scenes to prepare the campus, you may not have an idea of what we mean by face-to-face -face learning, but I can assure you it's probably not exactly like the face-to-face -face learning that you've done so far in your lives. Um, because most of our classrooms are not big enough to allow for safe social distancing with a full class of people you may still be even if you're meeting face to face you may still only be able to fit half of your students in the room at one time that doesn't look like any normal face to face class that i've ever taught right where half the people are prevented from coming on a certain day so what kinds of things are we going to have to do to deal with this weird social distancing masked kind of um face to face learning but also what happens if there is a spike, if um, people are quarantining, if the campus has to close, uh, how are we gonna be more ready than we were last spring for that kind of pivot? So adaptability is going to be at the core of what we're doing. Primarily what this class is about um, is about uh, developing COVID ready courses. We are not here to help you design your course period in the sense that 
we think you already know how to design your course. That's why you were hired to teach it. So we feel confident that if this was a regular semester, you'd be pretty much good to go. And maybe you'd have to call us up and be like, oh, Martha, can you help me with this? Or Jason, I got a Moodle question, right? But we assume that most stuff, you have a good idea. We assume that when we tell you, oh, by the way, there's a global pandemic and everything you know about teaching is gonna change, then you might feel like you need more support. So that's the point of this course is actually not to teach you how to teach a regular course, but to help you be prepared for what's coming this year. So what we um, suggest that you do as you move through this workshop is that you think in particular about one course that you're going to teach this coming fall and that that be your workshop course. Now, um, if you wanna do all the courses, you know, if you wanna run them all through this ACE workshop, that's perfectly fine. But in general, we want you to think of one course that you're teaching for fall. And the goal of this four week workshop is to get that course ready for fall. And of course, as you're doing that, you're gonna be learning all sorts of things that will help you deal with the rest of your teaching load as well. But you're gonna be working in what's called a course workbook. And when you're doing your work in that workbook, you'll be, it's really course design work, right? It's not just general stuff to help you learn things. We are focused, we are task oriented, and you're gonna be focusing specifically on designing your courses um, for fall. I want to um, say just a word about um, a term that you've probably heard by now, and if you haven't, we're gonna catch you up real fast, um, which is a term called high flex. Um, Generally, high flex stands for hybrid flexible. And we've already given a few workshops on this. So some of you have been with us and, and learned a little bit about high flex. Uh, in general, what high flex has meant um, nationally since it was invented, I don't know, like 10 years ago, um, or, or the term was invented by a guy named Brian Beatty. Um, the idea was basically that a course could run online and face-to-face -face at the same time. So you can see why that's useful for COVID, right? Because if you can only fit half your students in the classroom at one time, half can be zooming in online, the other half is sitting in the room, done. The only problem with that is when you actually start designing courses that way, you realize, and just allow me to be frank while we are recording, that this is a garbage idea on a lot of levels. And let me explain why. And actually some of my staff is probably freaking out right now because I didn't tell them that I was gonna call high flex learning a garbage idea. But I think they're good with it. But here's why HyFlex is a bit of a garbage idea. Um, first of all, for every course you design, you need to design three courses in one. You need to design an online synchronous course so those folks can just zoom in live and be part of the class. You need to design an online asynchronous course so if they can't zoom in live, they can still get all the content asynchronously. And then you get a, gotta design a face-to-face -face environment. That's triple the work for those of you who are counting, and I'll tell you most faculty are counting. And not all um, administrators nationally are counting, right? When they don't realize, oh my God, that's a, that's a hell of a lot of work. Um, so that's a problem. The other problem though, is that it doesn't make for an awesome experience. Like if you stick a webcam in the corner of a classroom and you tell people, don't worry, you can zoom in any time and watch what the real people are doing. Um, that's going to get dry really fast for your students. And to be frank, this is what a lot of us did last spring. And let me tell you, Anne McClellan was like, Robin, please keep people from just turning on Zoom and being like, we can just do the same thing we did before. Um, when you Zoom an hour long lecture or a class discussion and those people are watching on Zoom, I will guarantee that is not your most engaging moment in teaching. Um, so part of what we have to do is say, okay, we understand why High Flex was invented. It seems like there's a lot of promise there for COVID, but we don't wanna just stick webcams in the corner of our room and be like, good luck guys. Um, we don't wanna spend three times the amount of time designing our classes when we're already dealing with all the other stuff we have to deal with during COVID. So we're gonna help you get your courses COVID ready, um, but we are also going to suggest um, some ways of, of avoiding the pitfalls that are happening nationally right now, where everybody's like, we will Zoom, we will high flex, everything's great. Um, the problem is those actually don't have great results. Um, the, 
for students, these are not um, super good uh, approaches to the kinds of engaging learning experiences that we want. So we're looking at getting your courses COVID ready, um, but not losing the flavor of, uh, of what we are good at here. Um, to conclude this little portion, I will say we are going to lead with pedagogy, not technology. So if you're a tech whiz or a tech newbie, I don't think it matters that much. We've got lots of tech support people here who can help you with the tools that you choose. But if anything, we're going to try maybe to roll back the technology a little bit and focus a little bit more on um, what we know about teaching. So I think that will be comforting for those of you um, who are newer to tech and those of you who are great with technology, that's only going to be to your benefit. Um, we are going to be mission driven. We're going to think about the mission of Plymouth State and the way we talk about cluster learning and teaching. And we're going to use that to keep in the front of our minds as we design our courses. And then finally, we're going to keep students at the front. So we are always going to ask as we design, what is the experience like for our students? Um, this is ultimately about retention, but not just because the institution needs us to care about retention, but because we believe that thinking from a student perspective is going to be the way that we make it through this with our community intact. So I think we'll be very student um, mission and pedagogy focused as we approach ACE. So um, with that, I'm actually going to stop recording. I'll explain why in a second.